Hi, everybody at home. Welcome to the hybridization lecture. Um, all right, before we get into what hybridization is, oh, y'all need to pause the video and copy down that. But before we do that, um, let's start simple. I want you to uh, look at arsenic up there. I'm not making you get out a periodic table because you don't really need it, but I want to talk about arsenic for a moment. Hey, looky, looky, there he is. How many dots would be in arsenic's Lewis dot structure? Five, right? Right? No, you're good. Hey, you got, you, you got them there. Yeah, I asked how many dots would be in Lewis in a... <laughs> arsenic's Lewis dot structure? And the answer is five, because arsenic is in group 15. So draw this with me. Let's draw his Lewis dot structure. And I'd like to introduce just some simple vocab. One, the first one's not new. How many How many lone pairs do you see in arsenic there? There's one, right? There's a lone pair. It's any time there's two dots that are next to each other. So arsenic has one lone pair. All right. A new item is what's called electron density. Can we count electron density? And here's how this idea works. If you imagine that the symbol is in a square, the way that we usually do top, bottom, left, right, however many of the areas around the symbol have dots is an area of electron density. So look at arsenic. How many areas do you think he has? Say it louder. You like held it up harder. Right? <laughs> Say it louder. Um, yeah, there's four, right? Because there's stuff on top, stuff on bottom, stuff on the left, and stuff on the right. All right? Four is the maximum number there could be. So you're just looking, is there, how many of the sides has stuff? And in this case, there are four areas of electron density on arsenic. Finally, bonding region. A bonding region is going to be the areas with one dot. Here's why that's called a bonding region. If you have just one dot chilling there, another atom that also has one dot could come into that slot and insert that dot in that, open, in that opening and they can love each other and bond. So if the bonding regions are the area where there's just one dot hanging out, how many bonding regions do you see? Three. One, two, three bonding regions, one load pair, four areas of electron density. Simple. Well, let's draw cards this time and find out. Check out carbon up there. All right, look at carbon's location. All right, first card of the semester. If y'all are feeling good about this, people at home, it's an ace. Cluster one, you ready? Cluster one, seat four. Hey, one, four. Um, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four is correct, because it's in group 14. So, Four dots. All right. Now let's fill in the counting. Cluster three, seat six. Hey, three, six. How many lone pairs does carbon have? None. There are no lone pairs on carbon. Cluster two. Seat six, hey two six, how many 
elect regions of electron density do you see? Four, because there is at least one thing on each side. All right, and then cluster five, seat four, Aspen. How many um, bonding regions do you see? Also four, because it's all the spots with one dot. You can pass the bird. Questions? All right, let's get into what we really want to talk about today with that behind us. <clears throat> Back in unit three, you were told a lie, right? It's like the time your mom told you that she loved you. She doesn't. Unit three, we were studying electron configuration. And that was the 1s2, 2s2, et cetera, right? There was a misrepresentation that y'all did in your drawings there because you didn't have the bonding background for me to explain why it was wrong. But now you know how bonding works. So I want to show you the misinfo that you have. To do that, we need to look at the orbital notation of carbon. So just copy it down with me real quick. It goes 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. All right, so if you look at the periodic table, you can see where that came from, right? Hydrogen and helium are the two electrons there. Lithium and beryllium are 2s. Those are the two squares there. And then carbon is the second square in the 2p block. Here's the problem. These two items disagree with each other. The Lewis structure is correct because the Lewis structure has four bonding regions. We know carbon can make four bonds. You've drawn Vesper. You've seen it happen. But look at this expression. If we know that any time there's just one dot or one electron hanging out by himself is the bonding region, how many bonding regions does the configuration make it look like carbon has? Two. Two. It makes it look like you can bond there or you can bond there. That's false. Carbon has four which is why this is technically wrong. To fix it, we do a thing called hybridization. Now the word hybrid is not new to you, all right? Some of y'all probably have like hybrid dogs at your house. Anybody have a hybrid dog that you wanna brag about? Jeremy, what do you call it? A shepherd doodle, right? And the poodles really mess them up because the stupidest names come from poodles. Um, anyone else have a, a mix at home? It's the only hybrid. Have y'all seen the Great Dane Chihuahua mixes? They don't exist, the Chihuahua dies. No good for the Chihuahua. Anyway, um, a hybrid is when you take two different things and you put them together to make something new. And that's what we're gonna do here to fix this. We're gonna hybridize this expression to make it match what carbon, the way that carbon behaves in nature. Now, before we do that though, keep in mind, that these dots only represent valence information because it's only the valence, the high energy electrons that dictate bonding, which means this part of the expression right there doesn't really matter for this because it doesn't represent electrons that can bond. So I, I don't care about inner shell. I only care about the highest energy, the valence. Here's how we're going to fix this. To hybridize, we're simply going to well, smash this all together. If I were to mix them up, how many flat lines, orbitals, would there be? How many flat lines are there in total? The horizontal lines, how many do you see? One, two, three, four. So let's start a new drawing. One, two, three, four. There's the four orbitals pushed together. How many electrons are there 
all together. Oh, come on, talk to me. Don't let me draw cards for these questions. How many total electrons are there that are valence? There's four. All right, but let's follow Hund's rule. Up, up, up. Do you see how my hybridized version is better when you compare it to the Lewis structure? Now it shows those four bonds that we know carbon is able to make. Not only is it good to hybridize to show this true bonding nature, but there's a, a fun little label that we assign to it. And here's how it works. Of these four orbitals, one of them comes from S. So I'm gonna put S1, but we don't show ones in chemistry, so don't show the one. How many come from P? The other three. The descriptive label of this hybridization is sp3, which is very simply showing the origin of those hybridized, hybridized orbitals. One of them came from s, and three of them came from p. So there's different sp labels that they can have, and I'm going to show you how to get to those after I demonstrate a couple other things for you. Take a look at this image with me. This is showing you a triple bonded carbon. Look, look, look. There's one carbon. There's the other carbon. So those are the only two atoms that are there. Right here is the first bond. We call that a sigma bond, which you wrote on the opening slide. The very first bond is a sigma bond. But then there's a second bond here that's called a pi bond and a third bond there also called a pi bond, which we're going to go into detail on now. So let, let's redraw that picture like in a, um, in a way that more matches the way that we draw things. So do this with me. Let's do a triple bonded carbon. All right, it's got this middle bond right here as the first bond formed, which our new vocab is, that's a sigma bond. Sigma bonds have a symbol that represents them. Does anybody know what a sigma symbol looks like? That's an epsilon. Oh, no, it's a capital sigma. No, you're right. That's a capital sigma. That's a lowercase sigma. It's a, it's a little circle with a hat here. Sorry, I don't mean to draw it crooked. It looks like that. This is a sigma symbol. The other bonds, a second or third, are called pi bonds with a symbol that you could probably predict. Now, on the opening slide, you wrote some important things about these that you need to know. You wrote down, for example, that sigmas can rotate and pi's can't. What that means is, is that if you have two atoms that are bonded by just a single bond, which is essentially the same thing as a sigma, that you can rotate them without messing up the bond. But the moment you introduce a pi bond, a second bond, and you try to rotate it, 
the pi bonds will break if you try to rotate it. So when there's pi bonds present, the atoms can't rotate. Another important thing you wrote down is what can hybridize and what can't, which is going to get us back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago. But what did you write down? What can hybridize? Sigma bonds, and there's something else too, though. And lone pairs. That'll be really important later. But yeah, the sigma bonds can do the hybridization stuff. And so can lone pairs. But pi bonds can't. So keep that in mind. It'll be useful in five or ten minutes. Let's do something else, though. I want you to be able to count these symbols. Go ahead and draw this picture. Draw that picture. I want to show you how to count sigma and pi bonds, and it's, it's very straightforward to do. Keep in mind that the moment two items bond together, that's a sigma. The first connection is always a sigma. The pi's only show up for doubles and triples. So the sigmas are really easy to count because it's just every connection. Watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are nine sigmas in this drawing. got nine. The pies will be the regions where there are doubles and triples. Like, look here. How many pi bonds do you see above my ruler? Just one. One of those is sigma. The other is a pi. So we're at one right now. How many pi bonds do you see above the ruler now? There's two. One of them is sigma, but the other two are each pies. So there's two pi's there, one pi there, for a grand total of three. Nine sigmas and three pi's. So the question could ask it a little more in a fun way. It could be like, how many of these bonds can rotate? How many? Seven. Seven of them can rotate because those two cannot. Very good. You try one. We'll draw we'll draw some cards. Draw that. You're counting sigmas and pi's, but wait, don't do it yet. You're going to do it wrong. Let me show you a little trick. Whenever scientists have to draw really big molecules, like organic sciences, some of them are really large. So what do they do? They, they condense little parts of it. And that's happening here. Like, look at the very top. Do you see how it's a CH2 double bonded like that at the very top? Here's what's really happening. This carbon is double bonded to that carbon. All right, so this carbon is double bonded to that carbon, but what else is this carbon bonded to? Two hydrogens, which means there are bonds hiding there because it really looks like this. 
So keep that condensed stuff in mind while you're counting. Careful, there might be another one there. Find the sigmas and pi's. Ready? Don't shake your head. All right, let's find sigmas first. Have a number in mind, double check it. Let's go over to cluster two. Cluster two, seat one, two, one. Do you have a sigma number? The guess is eight. Do you agree or disagree? It's perfect. Let me show you the eight in case you can't see them. There's one there. Now remember my, my picture on the board behind me. This carbon's also bonded to a hydrogen, that's two, and another one that's three. Four, five, six, seven. But look here, this carbon's bonded to that oxygen, who is then bonded to the hydrogen for an eighth sigma. Let's go to cluster one. Seat three, hey one three, do you have a pi count? The guess is three pumpkin pies. Do y'all agree or disagree? Yeah, three. There's the second one there, that's one. The second one there, that's two. And the third one there, that's three. Three pies, eight sigmas. Yeah. <sighs> you're saying, how would you know if there was lone pairs hiding that aren't shown? Is that what you're asking? It won't. I see what you're saying. Um, condensed only includes single bonds. Yeah. Sorry, I got to your question. Yeah, the, and it's usually only hydrogen that condenses also. But I won't be tricky. I won't be extra tricky on those questions, I promise. All right, y'all. Let's put it all together for our final skill of the day, then. Can we do hybridization then based on what we've learned? Draw it. You don't have to draw the uh, question mark. Just draw the molecule. We're not counting sigmas and pi's. I mean, you can. I could ask that. But the question wants to know, what is the hybridization of this carbon? And we're going to use sigmas and pi's to answer it. Now, go back to the opening slide. I want to remind you. What are the only things that can hybridize? Lone pairs and sigmas. All right? Pi's cannot. Lone pairs and sigmas can Here's the way we're going to think about this. Watch, watch, watch. Look at this carbon. I want to know how many things touching that carbon can hybridize. Now, there's only two things that can hybridize. Let's go through them. How many lone pairs are on this carbon? How many lone pairs? Lone pairs are free-floating dots. None. There are no lone pairs to worry about on the carbon. These are all shared pairs. So lone pairs, we're not worried about them. The other thing that can hybridize are sigmas. How many sigmas are touching this carbon? Three. There's one, two, and one of those, because the other one in the very middle is a pi. So one, two, three. Now watch what I do. Watch what I do. I take that number three that I have in my mind, 
and I imagine three orbitals to represent them. We said there's three things touching that carbon that can hybridize. So I imagine the three orbitals that could hybridize. And now I need an SP designation. How many of those lines can come from an S? There's only one answer always. S can only ever give how many? One, right? Remember the old questions from unit three? I would say, how many orbitals does an S have? And the answer is always one. So there can't be more than one for the S. So these expressions will always have an S without a number. No matter what, one of them comes from S. So if one of them comes from S, how many come from P? That carbon has an SP2 hybridization because there's three things touching them that can hybridize. One of them automatically comes from S. The leftovers will be assigned to P. Look at chlorine. Look at the chlorine up there. We can find out his hybridization. They don't have to be the same. Same question, same questions. There's only two things that can hybridize. How many lone pairs are on that chlorine? There's three. One lone pair, two lone pairs, three lone pairs. So we are already at three things that can hybridize. Can anything else hybridize on that chlorine? The sigma, right there, there's a sigma also. There are now four things that can hybridize on that chlorine. There's no pi bonds there, right? All right, so four. Four is the number we decided on. For chlorine, it's one, two, three, four. How many of those lines can come from S? Only one always. Automatically, S is one. So how many will P be then? That chlorine has an SP3 hybridization, while the carbon has an SP2. Are you seeing it? Think you can do the last one by yourself? Last problem of the day. I want to know what is the hybridization of the central carbon and we'll draw the carbon. What is the hybridization of that central carbon? Don't put your stuff away. I, I, this is our last example, but there's an optional thing to write down afterwards that you might want to write down. But let's go talk to somebody. Question three. C6. Hey, three, six. How many items touching this carbon can hybridize? Y'all agree with two things? I agree. There's no lone pairs, so no lone pairs. Sigma, no one cares about the pi. Sigma, we don't care about the pi, so there's two sigmas, two things. All right, so then right away, there are two things that can hybridize. So to cluster four, C2, Aspen, we found you. Uh, Aspen, what is the hybridization then? And that's it. SP. No, no, never write ones. That carbon has an SP hybridization. 
if you hate this, if I lost you 20 minutes ago, um, this last slide could help you. I really shouldn't show it to you, but I don't want you to not be. You need to understand how I'm getting here, but this cheat sheet shows you everything that can happen in regards to singular atoms that are bonded to other stuff. So if you find it useful, then you're welcome to use it. Y'all have a good day.